everyone, my name is Catherine Verme and this is Beyond Focus TV. Unfortunately, Lydia is not here today. She is sick, so we wish you well and hope you a speedy recovery. I'm going to be talking about my journey as a model, as a casting director, and as a mom. So thank you for watching. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Hi, my name is Catherine Verme. I was born in Brooklyn and raised in the Bronx. So, you know, I have a little bit of flavor of both sides. <laughs> um, when I was growing up, um, I was from the Parkchester area um, and I was into dance and modeling and a, a lot of things that decided to be in the arts. As I grew up and went into high school, my focus was more on like media, communications, and journalism. Once I get more into the story, you'll see that it all fits all together with what is happening now. So basically, after high school, I went into college and I started to take up accounting and finance as my major and my minor. Um, after a few years, it got really, really boring, um, and I decided to switch out of it. I began a career in the fashion industry. Um, I started out with uh, men's tailoring, men's merchandising, uh, the textures of fabrics and different things that uh, pushed me forward to be a merchandiser in that career. Um, after a few years of studying that, um, I decided to switch over to women's wear. And I learned how to sew, uh, uh, to make jewelry, and different things. But once again, like I said, this is all going to wrap up and get itself um, together in one piece. Around about 2011, uh, I began with a small agency. I started modeling for print, for runway, um, videos, and different things. Now, I know what you're thinking. She looks kind of small, but that was the gem about it. So I'm standing at a whopping five foot three, and most models in the industry don't have the, the pleasure of being in high fashion runway shows, but I had the opportunity of that. Um, I've been into Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week castings. Um, I've had designers fly from Africa to um, make special garments for me just so I can be in their high fashion shows. Um, so it was just like a pleasure and honor to, you know, break into the industry and be so short because, you know, typically runway models are not petite like that. Um, and they try to push you out of the modeling industry because of your height. But I pushed through. I continued to fight. I continued to do runway, to do all of these wonderful things and move forward. After a few years of being in the modeling industry, I decided to take a little bit of a back seat on it and start, um, you know, helping models get to where they need to go. Um, so I started becoming a, a practice model runway coach, you can say. Um, I would rent out studios in the cities and teach models how to stand, how to walk, or even how to present themselves in a casting as uh, they were getting ready to be selected for a runway show or even a print. Um, so it was exciting for me and I, you know, continued to move forward with that journey. Um, once I realized that I had found that particular niche, I just continued to go with it. So now basically what I do is um, I work with different models. I work with uh, people from New York and in LA on how they can boost their careers from anything to runway, to print, to even becoming an influencer. It's so exciting in this new era on how modeling has changed and height or even fit is no longer something that stops you from doing what you have to do. All I say is that you gotta have a lot of confidence, know that you have to practice, and keep pushing. 
So now, um, basically what I do is just, you know, the castings for models and different things, but I also uh, participate with uh, movies and web series. So I deal with some actors. Um, unfortunately, I don't do uh, teach acting classes, um, but I do recommend um, some great teachers that can help out um, some people in the industry so they can move forward and become people on the big screen. Um, so it's kind of amazing, but I really like it. Um, I am married. Uh, I'm going on four years. <laughs> um, he is uh, American, but his background is Haitian. Uh, I am Puerto Rican and Jamaican. My mother is from Puerto Rico. Uh, my father is from Jamaica. So I like to call our family like the little Caribbean in itself. Um, so my husband, he is a uh, web developer. He works on um, different uh, applications, video games, websites, and he's worked with people like uh, Khloe Kardashian, uh, Usher Raymond, and even uh, Forbes magazine. So he's kind of got like a big uh, wide uh clientele that he uses but he's still pretty down to earth and that's something that I really really like about him he actually um was born in Harlem and um he's from Brooklyn also so you know it's a Brooklyn thing I guess <laughs> um and we have two children together um our oldest is Alan who's 12 and our youngest is Benjamin who is two um they're they're great uh they have like two adult minds but they're the best and I wouldn't give them up for the world um, so my little Caribbean family we're still a little Americanized but we enjoy um, everything that we can we're actually going to be going on a trip soon so uh, I hope that uh, we all have a, a great little time on our little vacation and everything but let's get back to how um, I started out and what actually made me want to go into fashion. So when I was younger, uh, my grandmother was a seamstress. Um, she actually was only on a third grade education when she transferred, I guess you can say transferred, uh, moved our family from Puerto Rico um, to uh, New York. Um, and the one thing that she did really love was sewing. She did sewing by hand all the time. She didn't really use like a sewing machine or any other tools but a needle and thread. So once I seen that, it was just something that was bred inside of me. I remember one time, uh, one of my Barbie dolls, um, I ripped one of her dresses by accident. And my grandmother showed me how to actually make a dress by hand. And it was really amazing. And that was the moment that it like tricked in my mind that it was going to be good. So I was really excited. And um, I was hoping that, you know, I could one day do something like that. So when I did go to college and get my degree in women's wear, it was really exciting. So I'm going to be right back. We're going to take a quick break. So I'll see you in a bit. My name is Catherine Vume and we're back. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, what I do now other than uh, working on uh, my business which is called Cats Castings uh, where I blog about my experiences in modeling and um, help people to move forward in their career in the modeling and acting section of their life. Um, recently, I just explained on how um, I got into the fashion industry, but my love for modeling was always number one. 
as I said before that you know technically in the modeling industry you know when you're five foot three you don't get the opportunities as much as the other girls but you have to push forward so another way that uh, women of my size and stature can embed themselves into the modeling industry is to participate in pageants now I know exactly what you're saying right now in your head oh gosh another beauty pageant queen <laughs> but actually beauty pageants are really helpful and they can help actually push forward careers non-for-profit organizations and help you get sponsorship so that you can continue your education if that's something that you had in mind right now I'm competing in the Miss Regency International pageant uh, my title is Mrs. East Coast uh, when I started out I won the crown for New York City um, and then I won the crown for East Coast. Um, but this coming up weekend, I will be moving forward and hopefully bring home the international crown. Um, but as you go into pageantry, um, step by steps, it helps you to build and develop your career. Uh, the first thing that's really exciting is usually when you get sponsorships or you get contacted by people, the first thing they ask is, can you do a photo shoot? which is something that has to do with modeling um, and it's really intriguing you know to be like you're coming from the pattern in pageant industry but you still have to know model etiquette so when you're doing that um, in the pageants it helps you to practice your runway walk pa practice um, wearing evening gowns and swimsuits so all of this stuff actually goes hand in hand and incorporates with each other the one thing that actually um, differs from that is when uh, the pageant industry helps you develop your speaking um, how to raise funds for a non-for-profit or if you want to get scholarships um, and just basic confidence usually in the modeling side um, you don't really hear from the model you just see them walk down the runway or you take the pictures um, but when it comes to pageants they actually want to hear your voice they actually want to hear what you are you care about what you want to do what how you want to make the world a better place other than world peace <laughs> Um, so I started my pageant career probably back in uh, 2012. Uh, I competed, my first pageant was Miss uh, Dream Castle pageant. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Miss Dream Castle pageant is um, usually located here in New York, but it is a, a Jamaican based pageant. Um, Dream Castle, which is a restaurant hotel that is shaped like um, a castle um, is on the beautiful iron shore of Montego Bay so whoever was the crowning queen they got to stay in one of the amazing suites there um, unfortunately I didn't bring home the crown but I did place third runner-up for my first pageant and it was really exciting you know to participate in something that was a part of my culture so as I began to continue to grow in pageantry, that's what I focused on. I focused on pageants that um, made me or helped me push through my culture. So if I couldn't represent Jamaica, I would represent Puerto Rico. And I would definitely be proud of my little islands that I had on both sides. Um, you know, in the pageant industry, uh, it always has that bad stigma that girls are catty and they're mean. Um, but when you focus on a goal, when you push forward, then you don't have time to be catty. You don't have time to, you know, pretend to be friends with somebody. You're working on your goal. And that is something that you can transfer into the modeling industry. When you have a certain goal as a model, like you want to be a campaign model, you fight for that. And that once you get that campaign, it's really exciting. Um, I can remember the time when I got my first campaign. It was for a company called Highly Humble. Uh, for those of you who are in New York, um, you know that Highly Humble is an amazing uh, brand. Um, he is uh, by the name of Luckner, Lucky. Um, he's a great designer. Um, and when I first got that campaign, I